Hi, and welcome to 2023 AP Teacher Week. My name is Claire Lorenz, and I work on the AP instruction team in the AP program. Over the next several sessions of this video series, we'll discuss AP's online platform called AP Classroom and all of the instructional resources available to support teaching and learning in your classroom. In this second video, we'll look at how AP Daily, Topic Questions, and Progress Checks can help support instruction in your classroom. Here's a brief look at the agenda that we'll be covering today. First, we'll do a quick overview of the resources that we'll be discussing today. That's AP Daily, Topic Questions, and Progress Checks. We'll go over what they are and when you might want to use them with students. Then we'll go live into AP Classroom so that you can see where you might find these resources and how you might want to assign them to students. And then we'll come back to our PowerPoint point and discuss key takeaways and the major points that you'll want to leave this session with. So we'll start with our resource overview. If you've watched the first session, you probably heard discussion about AP resources in general and how all of the AP resources are meant to support teaching and learning at each stage of the instructional cycle. So whether you are planning, teaching, having students practice what they've learned, assessing, getting or giving feedback to students, or reviewing and preparing for the AP exam, there are resources within AP Classroom that will help you at each stage of the teaching and learning cycle. During this video, we are going to focus largely on the teaching, practicing, and assessing stages. So we're going to be looking at AP Daily videos, topic questions, and progress checks. First, we'll start with AP Daily. So AP Daily, what is it? AP Daily is a series of on-demand short videos that teachers can assign to students, saving direct class time to focus on areas where students need help. These videos are meant to support student learning of the topics and skills for every unit of the course. That is, AP Daily videos exist for every topic and every skill in every course. They're available for all courses and all students, including students in exam only sections. So if you have students who are self-studying for an exam and they are not currently enrolled in an AP course in your school, students will still be able to have access to the AP daily videos to help them prepare for the AP exam. These videos are always visible to students regardless of whether teachers have assigned them. So starting from day one of their enrollment in an AP classroom section, students will be able to see all of the AP daily videos available for the course that they are enrolled in. So they can start watching AP daily videos right away. Students can kind of get ahead if they want to, or they can start reviewing at any time that they want to during the school year. There are also a accompanying review videos for particular courses based on review sessions that were held in previous years. So students who want to look at review videos from previous years, you may be familiar with certain sessions called AP Daily Practice Sessions or AP Daily Live Review. We've carried those sessions over in AP Classroom so that students and teachers can make use of them throughout the school year. And we'll show you where you can find those in AP Classroom. So how should you use AP Daily with your students? Well, you can have students watch AP Daily videos in class as homework for additional practice or review. And the videos can be used to either introduce new content and skills, complement direct instruction, reinforce concepts after class, and teachers can track student completion rates by class and student on AP Classroom. I'll come over here to this side and you'll be able to see, and we'll go over this a little bit more once we get into AP Classroom, but you'll see as you assign a video to a particular 
particular period or class section, you'll see the a designation that video has been assigned. And as students start to watch video, they will go from the unwatched list to the watched list. And the percentage of your class that has watched the video will start to increase. And teachers can also search transcripts for specific key concepts to review with students. So if you decide you don't need students to watch the full video, you can have them actually just watch portions of the video that are most pertinent to the concepts that you think that they need to focus on the most. So again, there's no right or wrong way to use AP Daily videos. You should use them in the way that make the most sense for you and your students, whether that means watching them before they come to class and you do direct instruction or watching them after class class after you've taught a particular lesson or even during class as a way to kind of pause and review what has been taught so far. It's entirely up to you about how you use AP Daily. The next resource is topic questions. So we'll start again. Topic questions. What are they? So topic questions are formative assessment questions that help diagnose student understanding for each course topic. That's why they're called topic questions. They provide students with practice applying the content and skills for each topic within a unit. If you remember at the very beginning of this video, we talked about the stages of the instructional cycle and topic questions were aligned with that practice stage. So topic questions are going to give students that opportunity to practice what they have learned so far as it relates to each topic within a course unit. They enable you as a teacher to check for understanding early and often to inform individual and class level support. So these topic questions will give you the data and information that you need to figure out what students understand and where you may need to double down on additional instruction or support. So in that way, we say that topic questions provide just-in-time feedback to teachers to help you identify a common student misunderstanding. So if you're looking at the results of topic questions and you see that students have picked the same distractor or the same incorrect answer, you'll be able to understand that students may have a particular misconception and you'll be able to kind of address that misconception before moving on to the next topic or the next concept in the course. At the same time, topic questions also provide this just-in-time feedback to students because topic questions also have rationales for multiple choice question responses. That means that when students do these questions online, students will be shown what the correct answer is and what the reasoning for why that correct answer is the correct answer. They will also be told why an incorrect answer is an incorrect answer. And after they have submitted their assignment, they will be shown what the correct answer is and what the reason is for that answer being the correct answer. So there's a lot of opportunity here for students to take ownership of their own learning as well. So how should you use topic questions in your classroom? Well, again, topic questions, just like AP Daily, can be used before, during, or after instruction. Topic questions are housed in the question bank because they can be assembled in a variety of different ways. Unlike the progress checks, which we'll talk about next, topic questions can be used as like single questions or you can put them together as groups of questions. And because you have the freedom to group them together as you best see fit, they live in the question bank so that you kind of can create the assignment that works best for your students. We're not going to talk a lot about the question bank today. That'll be in the next session. So we encourage you to kind of hold on and watch for session number three, where we'll talk in much greater detail about the question 
question bank. Topic questions can be used for a variety of different reasons. They can be used as warm-up questions, homework exercises, exit ticket questions, or even in conjunction with AP Daily videos. Some teachers have told us that they have students watch AP Daily videos, and then they use the topic questions as a means to assess what students have learned from the content and skills that they've taken away from the AP Daily videos. But in general, teachers use them to check for understanding after direct instruction. Sometimes you may have students even read something ahead of class and use the topic questions as a means to diagnose what students understand before they come to class so that you know what you may need to really focus on during direct instruction so that you really spend your time where students need it the most. There's no right or wrong way to use topic questions, just as like there's no right or wrong way to use AP Daily videos. It really is up to you. You know your students the best. So you have the freedom to use topic questions in a way that really gives you what you need for your students. And finally, progress checks. So progress checks are unit level formative assessment opportunities that have multiple choice and free response questions that assess students' progress in learning content and skills for each unit. So you will see them typically at the end of each unit. Progress checks were designed to provide teachers with the opportunity to get feedback on student progress through a unit and then allow you to see longitudinal progress of students from unit to unit. At the same time, just like topic questions, the progress checks will also give feedback to students on their progress, allowing them to see their areas of strength and areas where they may need additional study. So once again, like topic questions, progress checks will allow students to sort of take ownership of their own learning and kind of really see areas where they need to focus more. Over here, you'll see an example of a progress check question. We'll dig into this more as we get into AP Classroom itself, but how should progress checks be assigned? It's important to note that topic questions are formative assessment questions, and they're meant to be used as each topic is taught. Progress checks are formative assessments, and they are meant to be used at the end of each unit, so as each unit is taught. So you have the topic questions that help you assess student understanding at the end of each topic, and then progress checks to help you assess student understanding at the end of each unit. Just like topic questions, progress checks can be given in class or for homework, and they typically come in two sections. There is multiple choice and free response. It's important to note that while topic questions can be assembled in any way that you would like, for progress checks, questions within each section hold together as a form. That means that you cannot disaggregate them. You cannot separate the questions in a progress check. You can't decide, oh, I only want questions one, five, and nine, and that's all I want. And I'll just, I want to extract them from the progress check. You have to give all of the questions in the progress check if you want to give any of the questions. But you'll be able to kind of decide how you want to assign these to students. So free response questions can be completed online or in print. Multiple choice question sections must be completed online. And the reason that we do that is for two reasons. One, we want you to be able to see the data from students right away. If we didn't do that and students completed this on paper, you would not have the robust data and the reporting, which we will look at in session number four, that would be available to you to help drive some of the instructional decision making that would come after looking at student data. But also, students doing the multiple choice questions online allows them to see the rationales for correct and incorrect answers. If they did this on paper, they would not be able to see all of that information and would not have the power that it does with them doing it online. And I'll say really briefly that progress checks are formative assessments. They are meant to be learning experiences, and they are meant to be low stakes assessments. As such, they cannot be used to assign letter grades to students. 
If you want to read more about this, we would encourage you to read the AP resources and support section of the AP course and exam description. This is part of the very front section of every AP course and exam description or the CED. Basically, what this means is that we don't want teachers giving an accuracy grade for progress checks. So this particular progress check has a certain number of questions. If students answered half the number of questions correctly. We don't want teachers averaging in a 50% into a student's course grade. However, we understand that you need to give students grades. So teachers have done a variety of different things here. They've given students participation grades. They've given students homework grades. They've done very creative things like having students do sort of their own test corrections and grading those. They've done some sort of peer review type of exercises, graded those. They've had students create their own questions based on the questions that they've answered incorrectly and given those grades. So there's a lot of different things that teachers have done here to be able to give grades related to the progress checks. But the idea here is that progress checks are formative assessments and formative assessments were meant to be learning experiences rather than summative assessment, you know, four grade type of experiences. Before we go over to AP Classroom itself, I do want to make a plug for more information about AP Classroom. You can go over to two of our newly redesigned web pages over on AP Central, which is AP's main hub for all things AP. If you want to learn a little bit more about all things AP Classroom, you can go over to our main web page by scanning this first QR code. If you want an overview of all of the instructional resources and hear a little bit more again about how each can be used in your classroom, you'll want to look at this second web page here, which you can get to by scanning this second QR code. Okay. And with that, we will go over to AP Classroom. So we'll start by going to myap.collegeboard.org. You are going to want to click educator and you are going to want to log in with your username and password. And where you'll land is a personalized homepage of AP Central. You're not yet in AP Classroom. This is a personalized homepage of AP Central. You will see your name, the high school at which you work. You'll also see some helpful links for commonly used websites like the course audit, the AP teacher community. You'll also see the typical options that you see on AP Central if you want to view any of those pages. And then typically you'll see any announcements that might be pertinent to all courses or your courses that you teach. One thing I will note here is that student enrollment is just beginning on August 1st. So if you typically rely on your AP coordinator, to enroll students, know that that is just starting on August 1st. You will also see course cards for the courses that you teach. Don't worry if you don't see the same ones that I have on screen. I'm going to pick AP Chemistry. We'll go to AP Classroom. And now we're in the homepage for AP Classroom. AP Classroom defaults to the last place that you were in. If you have not signed into AP Classroom just yet, you will probably default to Unit 1 in the course guide. I should point out here, hopefully, if you watch Session 1, you learned a little bit about the new organization here. What you'll notice, we now have a two-tiered organization on the left-hand side. Hopefully, you'll find that a little bit more easy to navigate, but the course guide follows directly from the unit guides within the course and exam description. I am going to dive first into AP daily videos. So there are a couple of different ways that you can access AP daily videos. Let me show you those different ways. First, 
I want to point out that when you are on the course guide pages for each individual unit, I kind of like to think of each individual unit's list of topics, almost like, and I'll be dating myself here, a card catalog in a library. Hopefully most of you will know what I'm talking about, but a card catalog in a library I remember when I was younger and had to do report for school, you would go over to the card catalog and you would open the drawer and the drawer contained a whole bunch of cards that had all of the books in the library pertinent to that particular drawer. And AP Classroom kind of works in a similar way. So if I wanted to see all of the resources that were available for teaching topic 1.1, I can click on the 1.1 drawer and it's going to expand and it's going to show me all of the resources that are available to help me teach topic 1.1. And you can see here that there are two AP Daily videos and there are three topic questions. We'll get into topic questions in a minute, but right now let's look at the AP Daily videos. AP Daily videos, on average, there are about one to three per topic. And the number of videos really depends on the complexity of the topic and the number of instructional days it typically would take a teacher to cover that topic. So if you see that there's only one video, usually that means that the topic is a little less complex. If you see three videos, usually that means that the topic would take a little bit longer for a teacher in a class to get through. You'll see in this particular case, this topic has two videos. And you'll see that the videos are numbered and that each video has a description next to it. Now I can decide I want to assign a video based on just the description and I can assign both videos at the same time by just clicking assign all, or I can assign a video individually by clicking on a button over here. The screen actually means I've already assigned it, but you may decide you want to see what the video looks like before you assign anything. So what I can do here is I can click on this video and what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a video player. I'll see how long the video is. I'll see the topic and I'll see again the video description. I'll see the teacher in the upper right hand corner. I will see whether or not I have assigned the video and I can see whether or not I've assigned it to a particular course section. First of all, here are some features for the video. You can make the video go full screen. You can also change the speed of the video. So students who want to watch it on a little bit faster speed can do that. There are accessibility options and audio description, and then there's closed captioning. So one of the things that I like about closed captioning is I start to play the video. What I can do is I can turn on the closed captioning and that will bring up the bottom, what is being said by the teacher as we go along. But what I can also do is I can bring up a full transcript of the video and click search video and I will see the full transcript and as the teacher continues talking I'll see this vertical bar continue to go down the side of the text and as it gets to the bottom it will advance back to the top. But one of the things that I really really like about this is I can search for something very very particular. So if I wanted to look for the word moles, let's say the word moles comes up eight times in this video, and maybe I'm looking for something very, very specific. I can actually advance through this by clicking enter, and you will see that I'm advancing to the next iteration. It's the fourth time. That's the fifth time. That's the sixth time. I can scroll up and down. Maybe for whatever reason, I want to somehow, for whatever reason, focus on what what is around this particular iteration of this mention of the word, what I can do is I can click here and the video will jump to that timestamp. So watch what happens. The video right now is at 1.1, 1, .1, 1 minute and one second. If I click here, watch what happens at the bottom. It's going to go right to 417. And if I click play, what will happen is that the video will pick up and it will keep talking about that particular section. So if I 
want to talk about something very specific and I only want my students to watch a portion of the video because that's what that's where I found that they have a misunderstanding and I want to really focus them on that particular part of the video, I can do that. So there's a lot of things that I can do with AP Daily videos to really focus in on either particular concepts or give students a review by having them watch the entire video. So let me X out of this. Now, I talked a little bit about assigning to a class. Let me show you what that looks like. So here I have two different periods. I have AP demo class, and then I have something called period one. So right here, you'll see that there's an icon here and not an icon there. The icon here indicates that the video has been assigned to period one. When I don't see an icon here, it means it has not been assigned to that class. I can expand and I can see that there are certain students who have not watched the video yet and that there are some students who have watched the video. So in order for a student to come up on the watched side of the column, they have to watch 95% of the video or more. So whether they watch it on 1.5 speed or a double speed or something like that, as long as they watch 95% of the video or more, they will come up on that list. They have to let the video play. As you can see, I'm letting the video play right now. It's kind of advancing. But if they do one of these, which we call scrubbing the video, and they just kind of move it along like this, this is not letting the video play. So if a student does this and they tell you that they've watched the entire video, this is not watching the entire video and they will not come up on this particular list. And you will be able to go to one of the reports and you will be able to see actually how much of the video they have watched. So that's just something to kind of help you as you go along. If you wanted to assign to the AP demo class, what you would be able to do here is you would be able to click on the assigned list and you would be able to assign to a different class or student. Let me actually go into a different video video and show you how that would work. Let me go into, let's see, 1.2 here. 1.2 has another two videos. I can do it by that screen or I can do it directly from here and I can say, okay, period one, I can assign to the whole period if I want. I can also, if I want, just assign to particular students. So if I decide, let's say, I taught this particular section, but Kelly, Sam, and Marsha were absent on that particular day, and I really want them to watch this particular video, I can assign it to just these three students. And it will tell me it's just these three students that I am assigning to. So I can assign to these three students. I can put in a due date if I'd like. I don't have to. It is entirely up to you if you'd like. I can also copy a shareable link to this video for me to put in my learning management system that my school uses, but I would click assign here and that new video assignment was created. I can go to view assignments and that is going to take me to this assigned resources page. And under the video category, you can see here that I have assigned 1.1 daily video one, 1.1 daily video two, and 1.2 daily video one to just three students. And I can click here and see Marsha, Kelly, and Sam again, so I remember who I actually assigned this to. You can remember before only one student had come up on that particular list in my period one course of having watched 1.1 daily video one. But you can see here it says three students. Here's that one student that watched it. Here are two other students. So if I click I can see here, here's Kelly, she watched the whole video, but here are two other students who watched or started watching and the percentage of the video that they watched. So while Kelly was the only one who came up on the list of having completely watched, which means she watched 95% or more, Carol and Sam have started, and this is the percentage of the video that they have watched. And these 17 other students have not yet started. So this is a way that I can figure out how progress of students have been watching the video.
if I wanted to see all of the AP Daily videos in a particular unit and without having to open each topic drawer, I could go to this videos tab right here and I could click and I can see all of the AP Daily videos for the entire unit. Um, and I can decide whether or not I just want to kind of assign all of them for a particular topic, or if I just want to assign particular ones for particular topics. That's the second way you can access them. One final way that you might want to consider accessing them is that if you go back to resources and assignments, just before this, we were in assigned resources. If I want to see all of the resources that are available for me to use, I can click all resources and I can click over to videos and I can see every single video that is available for me to assign for the entire course. If you'd like to use our resources, but you may teach things a little bit out of order from the course and exam description, this may be a way for you to see a full catalog of all of our resources and you can sort by a different type of resource. You can also sort by whether or not you've assigned or not assigned this resource before in the past. Okay. So now let's talk about topic questions. If you recall me saying earlier, topic questions are formative assessment questions that are available for each topic in the course that help teachers identify student misunderstandings for each topic skill pairing in the course, but also are really meant to assess students' understanding of what is happening in a particular topic and give students the opportunity to practice what they've learned in each individual topic throughout the course. So you can see here for um, topic 1.1, there is three different topic questions. You can choose just like AP Daily to assign all of them at the same time, or you can choose to assign them individually. You can see as I kind of go through all of these that there are usually on average three per topic. And as I keep kind of going here, you'll see a few more. So a couple of things that you can do. One, you may want to look at the question first. And if you hover over the question, you can see the actual question and you can see the correct answer and kind of scroll and kind of scroll through. The other thing that you should note is that the topic questions are meant to assess the content of this topic, but also the skill that the topic is paired with. So if I click on the skill and everything in AP Classroom is pretty clickable. So just because it doesn't look like it's clickable doesn't mean it's not clickable. And so I clicked on the skill and I can see that this one says determine scientific questions and methods identify a testable scientific question based on an observation data or model that happens to be for chemistry here. So I'm clicking here. This one says, which of the following questions about the compounds is most likely to be answered by the results of the analysis? And there are questions here. You can see very much how this question is aligned to both the topic content, but then also the topic skill. So, and you'll see as you kind of hover over each question, each topic question, you're going to have a very, very similar structure. Because if we're suggesting that you teach this skill alongside this topic and this content, we want to give you a means by which to assess student knowledge of that skill with that content. So there's a couple of things that you can do here. You also may want to see a little bit more about the question and you can click on the question itself and let's see what happens. So here you're just seeing the question. The biggest piece of advice I can give you here is this side panel, also clickable. If you click on this, you are going to see a variety of different things. You're going to see the right answer. You're going to see the rationale. You're also going to be able to click on the incorrect answers, and you're going to be able to see the rationale for the incorrect answers. So if a student picked choice D, once they've submitted their assignment, they're going to be able to read why choice D is incorrect. 
they're also going to be able to see that B was the correct answer. And they're going to be able to click on choice B and read why B is the correct answer. For the teacher, you're going to be able to see some very specific details about the question, including what topic it came from, the skill, but then also the learning objective, the essential knowledge statement. These are all parts of the course and exam description or parts of the course framework that the question is aligned to, whether or not it's part of a question set, etc. And then you can decide whether or not you want to assign this question or not. You can do it from here. One of the ways that I really do like to do this myself is I like to come down here and I say, okay, I want to add this question to a quiz. And if I click that plus button, what's going to happen is that it's going to take me to the question bank. And if you remember, I said, because topic questions can be assembled in a whole bunch of different ways, they live within the question bank. The question bank then is going to automatically start a quiz for me. We call these assessments quizzes because quiz is a nice four-letter short word that fits in a lot of places. It doesn't mean it has to be a quiz. I like to call my things practice assignments if I don't really want it to be a quiz. Maybe I want this to be kind of like an exit ticket and maybe I just want to label number one right now. And I can just click and it's saved for me. Maybe I want more than one question here. So I go, you see that there are two tabs here. Right now I see that there's only one question on it and I can go to all questions. And the question bank is actually going to have pre-filtered for me, everything from topic 1.3, that's where I was, and topic questions. And you can see the three topic questions that are available for topic 1.3. And I will see the same questions that I saw before. Maybe I wanna add one more question for my exit ticket. I don't have to add all three. I could leave it as just one if I wanted to. I want one question. Students are going to do it on actually on their phones or let's say, or an iPad or something like this before they leave for the day. I could leave it as just one question if I want to, or I could add a second question and you can see all I have to do is hit the plus. If I decide I don't want that, I can take it away. If I want this question instead, I can click that one instead. So it really depends. And you can see as I added this question, my one went to two. If I take it away, it goes back down to one. Let's see, I'm going to leave it as two and I'm going to save my quiz. If I want to look at it again, I can see this. I can change the order if I want. I can do a lot of things here. And we'll go over more of that when we talk about the question bank. But then from here, I will save and then I can assign to my class. So I can assign to all of my classes, just one of my classes, just certain students in my class if I want. I can assign online or on paper. I'm going to sign online so my students can see rationales. I can do a start date, a due date if I want. I can do a timer. Anytime you see some of these like little tool tips right here, you may want to click because it'll give you some information about what that particular feature does. You should know that if you set a timer, a timer is really just an instructional tool. It will not lock students out of the assignment. We do that so that it can accommodate students with extended time. If you want to lock students out of an assignment or a quiz, you have to set the due date. So if I really want this students to only have five minutes, I would need to set this for 7-17-2023 at 1245 and then the due date as that and then students will be locked out after five minutes. Otherwise, I can set the due date as a different time or not at all and just set the timer for five minutes and then students will be warned that five minutes is up, but it will not lock them out. So I'm just going to sign this. And then I can either go and manage the assignment or I can just wait for students to look at this. And then again, as I go to resources and assignments and I look at assigned resources, um, these topic questions assignments will fall under my quizzes because there's some, there are things that I've created and you can see now these are all different practice assignments that I have created. These are my student results. And I can see how students have done on things that I have previously, I've previously assigned and whether or not students have completed 
I have two students here who have not yet completed this assignment. And then this is the one that I just assigned. And that should make sense because, well, I just assigned it. So nobody's done it yet. So you can see a lot of different things here about how I can manage these assigned resources. And if I go back to all, it'll mix that in with everything else that I've assigned so far, including that AP Daily video that I just assigned to three students. Okay. And let's go back and I'll show you really quickly one last thing, and that is the progress checks. So after I've taught all of the topics in a particular unit, I might want to give the progress checks. And the progress checks are the formative assessments that exist at the end of a unit that I can use to test for student understanding of all the topics and skills in a unit. Typically, there is a multiple choice section and a free response section. If you see multiple parts of a multiple choice section or multiple parts of a free response section, that is typically because it would mean that it would take more than 45 minutes to administer all of it in one period. If you are familiar with our course and exam description, we kind of define a period as one 45-minute class that meets daily for an entire school year. We realize that not everybody is on that schedule, but we had to define it in a particular way just to, as a basis to work from. So if you see multiple sections or multiple parts, that's only because it would be longer than 45 minutes, but you can assign it in parts if you'd like, or you can assign it all at the same time, especially if you have a longer class period, but you can also assign assign these for homework if you want. So you can look at them or you can assign them just right from here. If I click on the multiple choice section here, it's going to look exactly like the topic questions, just more than one question at a time. So here you're going to see, just like you did in the PowerPoint, a list of questions these, in this particular case, are all discrete questions. In some courses where you may have sets of questions, you may see bars in between questions, and that will tell you that they share the same stimulus. Again, if you, you can click around from question to question if you'd like. If you expand the side panel, you'll be able to see the correct answer. And again, the rationale, you can see the rationales for the incorrect answers. Again, you can see the alignments to the course and exam description. And you can do a lot of things from here as well. So you can assign, you can view a summary. You can also look at the scoring guidelines, which would give you one PDF document that actually has um, all of the questions and all of the correct answers. So if you wanted something really briefly that kind of had like an answer key for teachers, you can do that. The rationales won't be on here, but it is a very brief way to kind of give you an answer key. You can also do this with the FRQ section. So I can look at the FRQ section and I can see what those look like as well. And I will mention here, and we'll go into FRQs a little bit more in the question bank session, but you'll see what the questions look like. And if you expand the side panel here, and you scroll to the bottom, instead of rationales, what you're going to see are the scoring guidelines for each individual part of the question. And if you go over here and you click on scoring guideline, what you will be able to do is actually get a print version of this as well so that you can kind of see all of this at one shot as well in case that's helpful for you to have. So you can assign this from here if you'd like, and the assign works just like it did for um, everything else. You can choose how you want to assign it and whether or not you want to assign it to the whole class or just individual students, start date, due date, timer, etc. So very similar to how everything else worked as well. So that is our summary of AP daily videos, topic questions, and progress checks. We'll end our session by summarizing a few key takeaways that I hope you'll leave this session with. First of all, 
we hope that you're seeing that the resources within AP Classroom really do support all stages of teaching and learning within the instructional cycle. AP Classroom provides many resources to help students confront common misunderstandings and really persevere through challenging course content, starting from day one of the course and progressing all the way through exam day. These resources are really meant to help students learn and master valuable skills that are useful in their course, but also in all schoolwork and even beyond that, including time management, critical thinking, and independent study. Things like the rationales, thin the topic questions and progress checks are really meant to help students take that ownership of their own learning and figure out where they need to spend more time and what one student needs to do may be different from what another student needs to do. An AP Classroom resource can kind of help students kind of work on their own and make those decisions for themselves. As a result, you know, AP Daily videos, topic questions, progress checks, and personalized feedback based on those rationales can help students hopefully feel ready and confident to register for and take that AP exam. That's the hope that students see that there is a wealth of resources to help guide them through the course and get them ready to take that AP exam so that they have a chance to earn college credit. And if you do want to point your students toward more information, about all sorts of AP topics, we would have you point them toward our student blog, which is really written in their voice and to give them a little bit more guidance on all things AP. There's the web page, or alternatively, you can just have them go to blog.collegeboard.org and click on AP, and they'll see a, a wealth of articles there on all things related to AP. One last resource for you. Most of the resources that we shared with you today were meant to help support your day-to-day -day instruction and day-to-day -day student learning in your classroom. But we also hear from AP teachers that students ask them a lot of questions about how to plan for what comes after high school. So we wanted to share one more resource to help you answer those types of questions, and that's Big Future. Big Future is a free online resource that helps students take the right first step after high school. That's whether they're interested in a four-year university, community college, or career training. Whatever they're interested in, Big Future can help them start planning. You can visit bigfuture.org slash educator, or you can scan the QR code that you see on screen to access resources that will make it easy for you to share information with your students or support planning activities either in class or after school when you meet with students. Students. When you connect students with Big Future and they complete college and career planning steps, they automatically earn entries for monthly drawings for $540,000 scholarships. So we hope that this is another resource that you can make use of and are able to share with your students. We thank you for joining us today, and we wish you a successful year ahead. We hope that you'll join us for our next session, and you watch the remaining of the sessions in AP Teacher Week. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you again soon.